Hello and welcome to week 12 of the Gambling Show. Week 13? Yeah, it's week 13. Uh, it is, it's our 13th show, but it's week 12, right? It's week 13. It is our 14th show. 15th if you count the Oh my God, it's week 13. Week, we just did week 12. I want to reset that. <laughs> no, keep it in. You know what, man? All right. This is the blue yeah, this show. Yeah, this is the last regular season show. So I'm a little sad. <sighs> All the shows going to be fun, though. And Drewster's back. He's going to give us a beautiful ad read. Winning season has officially returned. And with the NCAA basketball back in action, plenty of opportunities to win at my bookie. You know what? Maybe there's a rivalry game you want to bet on. Maybe you like an SEC championship odds. Maybe that's already there. Or you can bet on NCAA basketball. I know I'm having a lot of fun with that one. Whether you're a season better or a first timer, my bookie gets you the most for your money with a double deposit bonus up to a thousand bucks to claim your bonus make sure you sign up and first timers can use the promo code transfer on your first deposit and you'll instantly double your money with my bookie simple first time betters make a hundred dollar deposit puts two hundred dollars in your account it's a free double deposit why would you not do it you will instantly double that money bet on team win totals or i guess since college basketball is going on bet on some mid-major basketball loyola marymount don't bet on Minnesota. That's personal advice from Andrew Sir. I'm man. Please don't. That's not fun. You know what? Bet on Gonzaga. Bet on Arkansas to win it all. Do what you want to make the most of that double deposit. Bet anytime, anywhere, on anything with my bookie. Beautiful. Yeah. College hoops. College hoops. I'm on a real heater. That's my record. Let me see what my record is so far. I'm, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I am. I'm cooking today. Uh, I got a, I got, I got a couple of parlays cooking. I'm 29 and 12 this year, so I should be running a college basketball show instead of this because I think I'm like even money right now. So that's what we're gonna transition into. It, the, yeah. The, y'all think the off season's content we're gonna be talking about like movements and this transfer portal? Now we're talking about college basketball. Transfer portal <laughs> CBB. We need to start that. I've been telling everybody that I will like fully get into college basketball if we do that. I think Liam, we Liam will would run the show like he, yeah. he, Liam knows yeah. more about college basketball than any person that is sane knows oh boy I'm watching the Bowling Green we're, we're recording on Tuesday we're a little earlier because of the holidays but yeah my Bowling Green bet does not look too hot um yeah I guess last week I think I went like I went up I think I went like five and six or something my lock hit I think it's like four locks in a row so the locks are on fire. I went five and one last week in my lock. Hmm. I, I was good on my singles. We do not need to talk about my lock. <laughs> Look, man, I'm sorry. I had a little bit of hope in Boston College. I thought Zay Flowers was going to score two touchdowns. Nope, they didn't even score two points. Yeah, that was – Uh, <laughs> yeah, I had them as well. I tailed you at BC. And 44 to nothing, not great, not – Great. I was watching the scoreboard at the stadium during that game. And I was like, okay, you know what? Notre Dame did this in the first half against Navy, and then they only won by three. This is Boston College this time. No, no, it just wasn't. Exactly right. Never was. It was never Boston College. It was always Notre Dame. I, I said my lock would hit as long as Stetson Bennett wasn't imbued with the power of Patrick Mahomes again, and he was not. So, <laughs> so this is coming out on Friday Per usual, uh, Mississippi State has already won. I hit Mississippi State money line bet, so that was a nice way to start the weekend. <laughs> uh, we'll start on the Friday slate. I think the first bet from us, nothing for those noon games from us. We're gonna start off our Friday with UNC NC State. I have UNC minus six and a half here. Mm-hmm. Uh, give me give me give me unc here the unc is just such a better team than nc state that if, if we just look at quarterbacks just in terms of talent at quarterback it's not even relatively close with mj morris versus versus i'm blanking drake, drake may, may. Drake may. Heis, heisman candidate drake may and i can't drake remember may. but the, the 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 difference in talent levels nuts drake may is a stud he if he if they, unc doesn't lose that week he's a dark horse for heisman he he's a he there's a there's a conversation we made he should still be going to new york yeah i, I think, think his heisman 
candidacy is kind of dead now because of that Georgia Tech game, which yeah. is a little upsetting because that's a game that they had to, they had to win that game. They had to. And Drake May, only 202 yards. They shut him down. First time all year he's been shut down. Um, but I in this game, I have the over. So I think that UNC moves the ball. I think they score like 40 points, and their defense is not good. So I think NC State puts up at least three touchdowns. The number's 56. I'm expecting like a 42-21 finish. So I like the over in that spot. I, I like UNC to have a big bounce back game here. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, I- I, I like that too. Hopefully MJ Morris actually plays because I actually like him. Mm-hmm. But obviously he's he's still a true freshman. He's young. He's going to develop. And now's a great chance to develop against one of the worst defenses I've ever watched. Yeah, that defense. I, is- I remember like oh, it was yesterday when this NC State defense was was making making Andrews there's life hell in his very first bet ever. Oh, uh, yeah. Shout out Gene Chizik for you know, every, every time I see that Florida A&M logo, I'm like, man, you know what? Y'all are a great program. Just went like nine and two. But come on. That was that was FAMU. I had UNC as well in that game and their defense. Oh, my God. It's crazy how the defense hasn't gotten better. You think at least they make adjustments? Nope. Nope. They don't make adjustments. So it, it's in the same way. That's bad. Yeah. So that's our first play for Friday. Next play for Friday, I'm going to Missouri. I'm taking Missouri Moneyline against Arkansas. I hate Arkansas. They're the bane of my existence because they keep getting into my gosh darn pole somehow. They keep winning. Uh, I can't get rid of them, but I think Missouri needs one more win to get bowl eligible. I think this is a spot where they want to get bowl eligible, or a lot of people think thought that they wouldn't. I think well, their their total had to have been probably what, around five and a half, I guess, four and a half. No, imagine, uh, it was I didn't probably probably four and a half or five. Yeah, so I think they want to be bowl eligible. Luther Burden wants to be bowl eligible. Arkansas, they, it's crazy how they let up seven hundred yards to Ole Miss and still won somehow. But I think that Missouri puts up a lot of points. I think it's going to be a close game. But them being a three point dog at home against an Arkansas team that I don't think is very good. Uh, it's it's kind of a trap. So I'm gonna go Missouri here. It's kind of, it's kind of more me not liking Missouri, more me more me not liking Arkansas than it is me liking Missouri. But I think Missouri is gonna come out firing. Arkansas really is nothing to play for. Uh, it's a big spot for the Tigers. Yeah, what I'll say last year is there was a clear spot. Missouri's still fighting for bowl eligibility, and they're playing Florida, and that Florida team was limping around. Dan Mullen was coaching for his job. And one of my biggest, like, you know, I'm going to pat myself on the back for that one. I called Missouri to win that game outright. They won that game outright because Florida sucked. Now, this is not about Florida, but Arkansas is not a good team. You know, we can say, oh, they play in the SEC. They had an extremely tough schedule. They honestly didn't because every game was like, oh, yeah, that's going to be a big game. A lot of their opponents ended up faltering. I mean, one of the most strange non-conference schedulings of the year was Arkansas going to BYU. They demolished BYU because BYU sucks this year. They are awful. Schedule is not even as good as it claimed to be. Yeah, so Arkansas beat a not good Cincinnati team. They beat up on South Carolina early. They should have lost to Missouri State. They lost on the oink-doink game to a bad Texas A&M team. Bad. Got beat up by Alabama. Got beat up by Mississippi State. Beat a bad BYU team, beat a bad Auburn team, and lost back to back to Liberty and LSU, and they just be Ole Miss. I just they're just not impressive. They don't impress me. I think KJ Jefferson is very good. Uh, I, I I I like Missouri too much in the spot. I mean, Raheem Sanders has been running the ball great for them lately, but I don't think that like KJ is going to be able to do anything. I avoided this game just because it's two bad teams playing each other, and like yeah. The- it, that, that's why if you're going to take something in this situation, take the dog just because mm-hmm. it's not more, more times than not, they're going to come out more profitable. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we remember that Missouri Auburn game. <laughs> yeah. So I think I this is our last Friday game only. So those are our three games from us on Friday. It's a packed slate. I'll probably be betting on stuff, not on the show and I'll throw it on tally's head and whatnot, but uh, UCLA Cal. Uh, this is a get back spot for UCLA, in my opinion, which I'll talk about later. But I think who is a play here? I do. And what you got? Uh, 
I have UCLA minus 10. You can be safe and buy the half point down to nine and a half. It's freaking Cal. Yeah, it's Cal. It's Cal. It's California Golden Bears. They don't have Jared Goff. They don't have Marshawn Lynch. They don't have Aaron Rodgers, which at this point might be a downgrade at quarterback, but that's <laughs> beside the point. UCLA just played a heck of a game with an injured quarterback against a team that's going to go to the playoff. And they're only 10 point favorites at Cal. Cal. Well, I think the only reason I think this line is the way it is, I think maybe linebackers are trying to take, bet on the chance that DTR doesn't play just because he's injured. And I would, I would take him if, play, but I think, I think he plays. I think he plays too. I would take UCLA minus 10 if they ran the wildcat with Zach Charbonnet. Yeah, I agree. Zach Charbonnet is going to run for, 300 yards in this game. It's it's insane. Jaden Ott might as well if they freaking give him the ball, yeah. which they, they haven't on a consistent basis, which is extremely – it's stupid. It's stupid. And he got the ball last week, but, yeah. A plumber threw the ball 43 times against Stanford. She, Yeah, That's I like great. UCLA too, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. So those are our Friday games. I guess for the Saturday slate, we might as well start with, I mean, it's not the game of the year because the game of the year is going on right now to get to the Bahamas Bowl. Ball State and Miami of Ohio are on right now, but we'll talk about the second biggest game of the year, Michigan-Ohio State at the shoe. What you got, guys? I think this is going to be a close game, so I I took Michigan with the touchdown. I don't love it because, in theory, Ohio State's the far more talented team, but Michigan's just – I, I thought I faded them this year. I had them bet under 10 and a half win total. I didn't agree. I didn't think they were going to be good all year. And they just keep on winning. They had bad schedule, whatever. They have the worst non-conference schedule in, in, in the FBS. Hawaii, I think Vandy, and then U, it, UConn is propping Colorado up. Colorado State. Yeah, Utah State. Colorado so, State. Hawaii. What? Colorado. Hawaii, UConn, Colorado, Colorado State. State. Yeah. And UConn. And when UConn. God, God love the Huskies. They're doing great. Go to the bowl, please. For them. When UConn is propping up your non-conference <laughs> schedule, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that tells you what you play. But I, they just keep on winning. So I, I'd like them to keep it close here. I think Ohio State wins, but I'd like Michigan State to keep it close. So I took them with a touchdown. Yeah, I, I'm. I was leaning that way. I decided not to take it and just go with the over. I think this is a game where Michigan is going to be able to run the ball, whoever is in the backfield, just because that offensive line, in my opinion, is the best in the country. And Ohio State, they look better on the defensive side of the ball, especially on that front seven. I still don't think it's nearly good enough to completely neutralize Michigan. They're going to be able to run the ball. I'm not at all putting any faith in J.J. McCarthy. I don't think he's a good quarterback right now. If he develops over the offseason, that's different. Right now, he is not a good quarterback. He missed so many throws against Illinois. Illinois got a great secondary, but he missed open throws. He missed open touchdowns. That can't happen against Ohio State. They are too opportunistic on offense. And with Ohio State, if they're able to run the ball with one of their two or three dynamic running backs, hopefully Travion doesn't have an 11 rush for 19-yard game like he did, what was it, last week? That was just pitiful. CJ Stroud, this needs to be his legacy game. This is the game that's going to define his career at Ohio State. He needs this to be his best game ever, and he's got the wide receiver core to do it. Unfortunately, JSN is just not a factor this season, which really sucks because he's amazing when he plays. I love Ohio State to put up 35. I love Michigan to put up at least 30. I love this over at 56 and a half. If you want to be safe, buy the point down of 55 and a half because 56 is a football number. If if, if if CJ Stroud comes out and has a good game here and Ohio State wins, he wins the Heisman. It's as simple as that. I would say we need to watch Caleb Williams in the Pac-12 title game first. I I would love – I have a Caleb Williams or Heisman bet. I would absolutely love that. But I I, I just think with Ohio State's record, I think it's, I think it's going to give it to him. I, I don't disagree with you. I disagree with the notion that CJ Stroud should win the Heisman because even if he beats – I think if Caleb Williams beats Oregon and beats Notre Dame, he should win the Heisman. He's been the best quarterback in the country this year outside of Drake May without the Georgia Tech game. I, I just – CJ Stroud struggled in some spots where it's like, I understand it's windy. How the heck do you struggle against Northwestern? Yeah, Stroud is kind of soft in my opinion. Like he's a very talented quarterback, but he has trouble, trouble like – 
hitting deep throws and he misses guys sometimes. He's just the best receivers in the country. So if he makes bad throws and it's, oh, what a catch by Marvin Harrison Jr., what a catch by Ibuka, where Caleb Williams kind of ca- is carrying USC to a potential playoff spot. So I think that Caleb Williams is a better, more talented quarterback, but Stroud probably based off of Ohio State's success might win it and because, you know, he's got the Ohio State kind of um, – Thing for him to go back to go back at the game. I'm not touching this game solely because I want both these teams to lose somehow. Uh, <laughs> won't happen, but I don't like I it's tough for me because I think that the, I think the spread is way too big seven and a half. Like, I don't think Ohio State is good enough to cover that number, but then again, Michigan almost lost to Illinois last week. Like, I was I was in the press box for Ohio State, Maryland. I watched the entire game, I sat up there, and Ohio State didn't impress me. They probably should have lost that game. But because they just wore down Maryland with the run game, it wasn't even Trayvon Henderson. Trayvon Henderson was hurt. He was awful in the first half. He had 19 yards on 11 carries, and they put in this freshman down, down Hayden. Hayden was incredible. Hayden ran for, I think he had 20 something carries in the second half, and he ran for 130 yards in two quarters of football. So I don't think you're going to be able to have the success running the football against Michigan, but Michigan. They're going to run the ball 30 times, Blake Quorum. J.J. McCarthy is going to have to beat you. I don't know if J.J. McCarthy can beat you. He's not – I don't think he's very good. And I'm saying that – and Sean Clifford's my quarterback. But I, I don't know. It's it's tough for me because I, I don't really have a rooting interest in this. I just kind of want to see chaos. I would probably lean the over because I don't think – I think Ohio State's defense oh, – offense, excuse me, is very good. And Michigan's and Ohio, their defense isn't very. It's not good. They don't have a good defense. It's fine. Um, They've got good players. They don't have a good defense. Yeah, it's they have JT. They have a good front, but their corners are awful. Their corners suck. So if JJ McCarthy, their back end is bad. That, yeah. If JJ McCarthy can get the ball moving through the air, I I do like the over, but that might be a live bet for me. Just watch the first quarter and then take something. But yeah, I'd probably lean Michigan and and the over. I just don't. I think the number is too big. I don't think Ohio State's defense is good enough to stop Quorum. What's the first half spread? Four and a half. Ooh, mm. Michigan sucks in first halves this year. I could see Ohio State being a touchdown. Like, has Has Michigan covered a first half spread this year? That's a great question. Because they didn't cover last week. Because I had Illinois. I know they did because I had them in the, in the lock against Hawaii. I, that was my lock one week, and I, it hit. So I know they yeah. covered at least well, one. So, but they didn't cover that game. <laughs> oh yeah, fifty points. Oh, though, so like... let's go. I don't think they covered against Maryland in the first half. I don't think they covered against Iowa in the first half. Indiana was the score of the half in that game. I don't think they covered in this one either. No, no, they were wasn't they like fourteen ten in half, right? Indiana. Yeah, they were losing. They were, they were losing, they were losing Penn State at half. Yeah. Oh, Ohio State first half. That's a look. That's a look. See, that's minus four look. and a half. Ohio State revenge. They're at home. Add that to my card. Actually, add it to my card. Ohio State minus four and a half first half. Beautiful. And that's oh. how you find winners. Okay. So your your one cover of the year is against Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, Good stuff, fellas. Yeah. So that's our play there. Uh, that'll be a fun game, though. I think it'll be down to the last possession. And Bowling Green's Matt McDonald was killing me today. He stinks. Don't say that name, please. I still have PTSD. Yeah. So going back to the Heisman real quick. So when I was saying that, I thought there are odds. So when I looked at the odds before Saturday last week, it was Stroud at plus 125, May at 400, and uh, and then Williams at plus 1,200. So you could have got Caleb Williams at plus 1,200 to win the Heisman last week. I bet him at plus 800 at the start of the year. So I'm, I'm a little disappointed about that. Yeah. Wow. What's but they're both so right now they're both plus one twenty five. Let's see. Do this live. Oh, I also made my parlay live on the pod as well. Oh, this is going, man. This is some great radio right now. But let's see what the Heisman odds are. Heisman it's odds plus are for Williams and Stroud, and then twelve hundred for Quorum, and that's it. It's like Heisman five thousand for Duggan. Huh? Yeah, I don't get Heisman odds in New York because it's stupid here. Look, man, at least you can bet. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, let's move on to another. I think this is kind of an interesting game at 12, uh, 12 Eastern. 
9 Western, 11 Central. Uh, South Carolina, Clemson. South Carolina is going into Clemson off the biggest win in program history in however long. They beat the piss out of Tennessee. Spencer Rattler had a Spencer Rattler game. I don't know if he'll ever be able to duplicate that performance. But for me, I'll kick it off. Uh, I think you guys might agree with this play. South Carolina plus 14 and a half. Uh, I just think they're coming off such an emotional high and that they're going to be motivated for this game now, where if they would have gotten beat up by Tennessee, they'd be like, whatever, we'll just go out there and play. But now that they beat up Tennessee, they're can they they're kind of going with the mindset that we're going to win this football game. We can beat Clemson and ruin their season, which I would love because I hate Clemson. So I think Rattler performs. I think the defense steps up. DJ Ungalele is horrible. He's still starting, right? Yeah, yep. unfortunately. Yeah, so for for reasons we don't know yet, but... Yeah. Oh, we sense. know it's Dabo. Yeah, give me the Cox plus fourteen and a half. I like that half num that ha- half a point right there. So thanks yeah. for that, Vegas. The, the, that line up. is screaming at me. I didn't take it, but it was screaming at me when I was looking at the games. Yeah, I I also have it. it it's just too many points. It it's Wait, too many running. points. I, now, granted, last time I said it was too many points. Forty four zero. Yeah, <laughs> but. This is not Boston College. We're talking about a South Carolina team that's seven and four. Very well could be ranked, should be ranked. I mean, UCF just lost to Navy still and is still ranked. Yeah, don't get me started by the committee. Know. I'm going to get very upset. Uh, betting odds on the committee getting rankings wrong. Minus 10,000. Mm. Just... It hit. It hit. It, it hit. hit. My <laughs> that was my lock. Make that your lock every, you know, late season week. You're going to have a great record. Look, South Carolina's offense looked better. They're getting the ball to Jaheim Bell. They're getting the ball to Antoine Wells. Spencer Rattler looks confident. He looks just so much more, like, poised. Mm-hmm. Earlier in the early in the year, I can't talk. Earlier in the year, he just looked a little frantic, a little just out of place. You could tell that this wasn't working well. But now it seems like after about 10 games, he yeah. finally got into his groove, maybe a little too late. But no, Clemson is not good. Their offense struggles to score. Their defense is very good, but they've had some inconsistent games. They've had some games where they are willing to let teams run the ball and run the ball very effectively. If South Carolina can do that, I think they cover this easily, and I think that there's a very good chance they win this game outright. I'd love Clemson to lose game. I I have like four or five win totals that are coming down to the last week. Clemson under 10 and a half is one of them. I had two, I had two win total tickets. One was finished after like eight weeks with Maryland over five and a half. I don't know how the heck that was a number. Granted, they still have six wins Mm -hmm. and Georgia tech, like Georgia tech. Come on. man, Georgia tech and Duke killed me. Me and Dave talked about them at length about on the ACC show about how they were going to suck. And they, both of them are okay. <laughs> and the weirdest thing is, I didn't take Colorado because under two and a half was minus 187, and I was just not willing to take that. That's way too much juice. It, it's like, granted, I should have taken it and put my entire account on it, but you know what? Whatever, man. That's the that's the th- annoying thing about season-long props is, like, it feels like a waste to put a big amount of money and just have it just sitting there in the account for – three months yeah mm-hmm. it's a pain and then but it's then like it hits it's the best yeah it was, it was a nice little boost I, I, was, I was going through my cat the other day and i was like where'd this come from and it was because nebraska under it hit <laughs> oh yeah that i freaking i don't know why i didn't take that one either i'm stupid yeah i wish if if i could go back if i had a time machine i'd be rich <laughs> oh yeah i would have just bet on lester to win the premier league oh boy yeah I, I would just cook up dumb single game parlays and just like, I would, I would miss like for, uh, for like three weeks straight and then just hit the one that hits for like 20 K once every four weeks. I got, got to sneak it in somehow. Yeah. I think those are only noon games that we have on here. So let's the, keep... the new, the noon slate's a little weak. Yeah. I mean, you got those two and then everything else surrounding it is kind of meh. Like, yeah. You know, nothing really moves the needle other than those two. It's, Rutgers, it, Maryland. It, a rivalry week, the the noon slate usually sucks outside of uh, the game yeah. because that's usually like the standalone. That's the only game you're going to watch. A lot of the great games, whether the teams are good or not, it's just great rivalries. Those are usually later in the day. Yeah, so then, all right. Uh, Kentucky, Louisville, I'll talk about a little bit later in my parlay. 
Uh, rank Louisville. Rank rank. That's rank Louisville. Ranked Louisville. That's just gross. The Iron Bowl. Auburn Ooh. going to Alabama. 22-point favorite. That is too many points in the Iron Bowl. Give me Auburn plus 22. Cadillac's going to have these guys motivated. They win this game. Somehow they're in a bowl game. Alabama's kind of limping into this one. They beat Austin PA by 34 in a line where that – only it wasn't. Three. It wasn't a line. I couldn't bet it. That, that's that's how bad like, it was. It wasn't a line. They only won that game by thirty four. They probably should have lost to Ole Miss. They lost to LSU. I I don't know what's going on with this Alabama team, but I think Auburn, Auburn's believe me, they're not a good team. But I think they're going to come into this game juiced up. They're going to cover the twenty two. Alabama's not going to blow them out. Alabama was minus forty four and a half. <sighs> Yeah, so it's too many points for the for the Iron Bowl, and it's way too many points for this Alabama team in particular that yeah. like hasn't blown really anybody out. No, not at all. Like, like you like there's been better Alabama team. I think last year the Alabama team was better, and this Auburn team last year was not good either. But what was that line? Let's see if we could find what that line is. I'm gonna search. Uh, mind, mind if I break some news real quick? Do it. <laughs> Lance Leipold, you are a forever Jayhawk. What was the contract? Uh, through twenty twenty nine, it's a contract that like kind of locks him at Kansas. That's crazy. I mean, good for him. It, oh. Amazing for him. I'm glad he found a home. I, I don't like those coaches that have success at bridges bouncing up and down, especially older guys like Leipold. Just just find your home. It seems like he's found one at Kansas. All right, so would you we can we agree that that Alabama team last year is better than the Alabama team this year? Yeah, oh, by a freaking mile. And the Auburn team was around the same, I'd say, right? I would say this Auburn team's worse. You think this Auburn? Yeah. Okay, this Auburn team was worse in terms of talent, but they're better in terms of grit. Yeah, that's kind of yeah, very yeah. yeah I agree with they're that. They're better in terms of because they have Cadillac Head Williams coaching. <laughs> yeah, the and... spread last year was twenty and a half. So. Yeah. I, yeah, I think Cadillac Auburn covered. At least Auburn covered spread, my so opinion. I'm going Auburn. Auburn covered with a quarterback who had one leg. Yeah. And granted, they should have won that game. They should have. That was such a shame. I mean, I congrats, Bryce Young, and your Heisman. But yeah, you won the Heisman. That's his Heisman moment in the last drive. All right, next up, I don't think we have a play. Any? Don't we don't have a play in Oregon, Oregon State, right? I'm. I, I, I have it in my parlay. I'm very close to buying a half point and going Oregon. I, I think if Bo Nix can run a little bit more than he did last week, I freaking love Oregon's offense. I understand Oregon State's a very tough defensive team. Their offense does not move me outside of their offensive line. Then Now, that offensive line moves yeah, a lot of people, know. a lot of defense alignment. But the skill positions that on their offense, just they don't make me smile. You know what makes me smile? That Oregon offense. That or that Oregon offense, man. It's yeah. it's so good. Yeah, I, I have it in my parlay. A little, little spoiler. I, I have Oregon in my parlay. I'm glad All you right. don't have Oregon State because I don't. Yeah, I don't have a play here. Just, I'm just a little curious about what the consensus was. I'm a little salty that they. I'm, all right, I'm going to talk about the committee real quick. I know that Penn State's like out of it, but they're stuck at 11. Like they're not moving from 11, and it's kind of annoying me because I want them in a New Year's Six Bowl, but. Like, Oregon jumped them fine, but, like, the way that the committee sees things is that Penn State beat up uh, Maryland, they beat up Rutgers, they beat up Indiana, yada, 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 but Michigan, Michigan, Ohio State plays those teams close. For Penn State, it's your schedule is not good. For Ohio State or Michigan, it's, oh, that was a tough, gritty win. Good job, guys. That's just – that's my little spiel on the committee and how much I hate them. I mean, if I can go on a spiel about the committee real quick. <laughs> there is in no world where Michigan should be ranked ahead of TCU. Yeah, I agree. That's that's the same. That, that's exactly the point that I'm talking about. It's a gritty, gutty win against an Illinois team. It's, I guess TCU, the same thing with Baylor, but you were at Baylor. Michigan was home against Illinois. And TCU, you can make the argument, should have won that game, played a better game. No one on earth thinks Michigan was the better team against Illinois. Granted, no. I, only, I only got to watch the last five minutes of that game, so maybe I'm wrong, but in those last five minutes, J.J. McCarthy was inaccurate. He could not make good decisions. The defense had some good stops, but man, if they didn't have the best freaking kicker in the country, there is no way they're a top 10 team right now. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
And then on that note, since we just talked about Illinois, my next play in the Illinois game under in Illinois Northwestern, what's that number? I wrote it down. 38. Neither of these teams, uh, Illinois is going to score, what, maybe three touchdowns. Northwestern won't score. So that'll yeah. put you under that number. I think it's going to, I literally think the game is going to be 21 nothing. So North, Northwestern can't score unless I bet on them to go under. So, you know what? I will go away from that game just so you can win it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Same. Northwestern will do that thing where they're going to try to keep time of possession and possess the ball more, but then it just leads them to getting down to like the 40 yard line and punting and then a touchback. Mm-hmm. And then it's another long, it's just the big 10 West this year. Everyone plays each other the same exact way. And it's kind of gross, but you don't need to talk about that division, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, that's an under for me. Yeah, unders in the Big Ten West have to be extremely profitable this year. I'd, uh, I'd have to imagine. Especially with freaking Minnesota and Illinois. Isn't and Minnesota, Iowa Wisconsin and... like 34 right now, that number? Uh, I would. I, I don't even want to talk about that game because I don't understand that spread at all. It's 36. But... Yeah, but... It's, I, I think it's – I think it's because it's at Camp Randall. That's the only – yeah, they're giving them three points because it's at Camp Randall, but it's also like – I'm not going to get into it because I'm going to sound biased with what I say. No, g- get into it. How it's on earth do you watch Rangers. Wisconsin play football and think they're better than Minnesota? Minnesota's yeah. got a better defense, a better run game. Neither of these teams can pass. How? You know what? How? You know what? No, don't do it. Don't do it. Minnesota money line. Add it to the card. <laughs> hey, you know what, man? Switch this orb for an axe. And I'm keeping the axe in my Twitter username. Minnesota money line is going on the sheet, which means I, it's going on the card. I'm I really don't out. understand it. I don't. Should I throw it on, on a napkin or something? do we have an actual piece of paper now? I'm on a Ooh, book. Bring back napkin, Dave. Oh, you want you want the napkin? I still have the napkin from last week. It's sitting here, right in front of me. It's going in the Hall of Fame. I think if, I might, if, well, if, the reason why I moved off the napkin is because I didn't have. A, if I if I had been positive last week, I think I broke. I was gonna say. It, then I'm staying with the napkin. But the book's been all right this year. So Minnesota money line. I might eh, I might put that in the parlay for some juice. I mean, if you want to, I'm not going to say it's a bad play, but man, just. That game is going to be so disgusting. I'm not going to want to watch it as a football fan, but as a Minnesota fan, my eyes are going to be glued. And I'm going to have my gopher rolls on, singing the rouser, holding an oar. And if we win, I'm going to go rowing down the Mississippi. Next up, then, I'm going to go – we're going to go to TCU, Iowa State. Oh, yes. So, I'm going to take the under energy from – the last two games we've talked about and put it right in the TCU Iowa State. Andrew, sir, I know you love the Matt Campbell system. I think you have the under as well, right? Yeah, I've under 47 and a half. This might end up being a two unit play, and I'm usually a one unit guy. Look, man, I don't care how good TCU's offense is. And it honestly wasn't that great against Baylor. They only scored what, like 20, 29? Mm-hmm. 29, 28. Like, look, man, Iowa State's got a good defense, and they play snail ball. Like, how is Iowa State not in the Big Ten West playing Iowa every week so we can get a bunch of nine to sixes? I don't know. Iowa State's going to want to keep possession. I don't trust TCU's defense enough to stop Iowa State from having, you know, a a few eight or nine minute drives. I don't even think they're going to get touchdowns. They might get some field goals. TCU's offense is good, but we need to start having a discussion. I think Quentin Johnston's a very talented receiver. He's had two Fireball games, absolute domination. The rest of his games, he's been like, okay. He makes some great catches, but he hasn't dominated the stat line like some people will say he has. I don't think he's going to have that type of game against Iowa State. Iowa State's too good defensively. Iowa State's going to have the ball for a long amount of time. I don't see the explosive plays coming from TCU that we saw like against West Virginia or against Oklahoma. It's going to be a slower game. Iowa State always plays their pace no matter if it's good for them or not, under 47 and a half. This game screams 28 to 10. So you know what, uh, Iowa State? Iowa State kind of gives me better Northwestern vibes because they'll just control the ball and take forever and play good defense, but they do it more effectively, I think. 
And TCU, yeah. I think, has proven to me at least in the last couple of weeks that it was always TCU's defense is terrible. TCU's defense is terrible. They can play defense and win games yeah. making stops. So yeah. I don't think that – I mean, the only really good player in Iowa State is Xavier Hutchinson. Uh, Will McDonald. Deckers, I also like on the defense. Side. Yeah. Deckers is still the quarterback, right? Or did he get back? So, as far as I, I know. I don't Just really like know. I, I kind of fell days. off the uh, – there. oh, my God. He's no Brock Purdy. So, oh, my God. All right, I was ready. 10 points, 14 points, 31 against West Virginia. West Virginia, congrats. Uh, so, 10-14 win against West Virginia, 13-21-9-11. They, they have to have one of the lowest scoring averages in the country. Yeah. Well, I, do, I that do the four really... lowest scoring averages teams in the country – are are they all in Iowa and Colorado? That sounds right. If I had to guess, yes. Let me, I would say I can find it real quick. I have a site. Twenty point seven points per game. They allow sixteen point five. So they've got a good defense, and they're playing in a conference with a lot of good offenses. Yeah, and I also think that TCU is gonna like they just want to survive this game. Like unless they go up big, then they're gonna keep running up the score. But I think Iowa State's defense is good enough. To kind of keep it relatively close, the spread is ten. It's probably going to hang around that number for a little bit, uh, but I think TCU is going to kind of play conservative towards the end of the game, just to pull, just so they can win and not. They just got to win this game and then focus on the Big Twelve championship. Don't look ahead, guys. Just don't, because I want you guys in. I, I think they're a lot of fun. I want them in the uh, the playoff. I also have a future on them to win a national championship. That took a couple weeks ago. <laughs> You know what, man? For you, I I hope we get some good old horned frog memes. Give us hit no toad. I love the hit no toad memes. In SoFi, that's where the national town game is. I think. I so. think it's in LA. I think so. So, let's move on from TCU Iowa State talk. Moving on to our next game, we just brought up Colorado, the state of Colorado. We're going right back. Utah, Colorado, 4 p.m. Eastern. Matt, I think you have a play here. That's me. 29 and a half. It's a big spread. But the thing about Utah is they're not they're not ashamed or scared of blowing teams out. Like we all saw Utah lose the first week and we're like, ah man, Utah, maybe they just don't have it this year. And the second week they, they played Utah, Utah Tech. It was an FCS school. It, it was in Utah. Southern Utah. They, Southern Utah. They beat mm-hmm. them 79 to 0. Like Utah is not ashamed to blow a team out. And if there ever there is a team to blow a team out, it's the Colorado Buffaloes who cannot score the ball on offense whatsoever. Yeah. Like if Utah scores 35 points, they probably cover this. Like U- Utah defense good is good enough that Colorado shouldn't score more than a field goal or two. Yeah. I mean, I, I really wanted to take it just because last week that Washington Colorado game, I was sweating that under so hard because oh, I, Washington I, I was just spread scoring there, so I was chilling yeah well I should have taken Washington spread look man Colorado I I I wish you success I wish you success but not when I bet against you and I'm gonna bet against you a lot until you do something good and you're not doing anything good right now yeah they're bad uh Utah I mean what are they sitting at right now 18 or something, 16. I forgot what they put the playoff, put them at. But they're 8-3, and three and they're a good team. I mean, they lost to Florida week one, and they lost to a good UCLA team, and they beat a good USC team. They lost to a good Oregon team last week. Cameron Rising played like poop. That game was a bit of a mid-off. That was ugly. But yeah, that was an ugly game. But I like that minus 29 and a half. They're going to blow them out. They, they, they're they going to come in motivated. Colorado stinks. So, yeah, Utah's going to roll in this one. Sweet. Makes you wonder how the heck did Cal lose to them, right? I'm I'm glad. Good for them. They got a win. Uh, you know what? I'm happy for them. I'm happy for Mike Sanford getting a win as an interim head coach. You know, as much trash as I talk about them and him, always want to see guys be successful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unless you're a Wisconsin Badger, then I I hope you stubbed your toe on a Lego this week. Oof. So I've I've found the stats. Oh, we got it. The bottom four teams in scoring, only one of them resides in Colorado or Utah. It's Colorado State. Then we have UMass at 13 points, New Mexico at 14.3, and Northwestern at 14.7. Yeah, Colorado is next. 
What's Virginia Tech at? Uh, yeah, they've got to be in 118, so 13 from last, 19.3 points. Yeah, that <laughs> offense is anemic. <laughs> yeah, but then Co- Colorado is 127, so they were fifth from the bottom, and then Iowa's 123rd. Let's move on to another anemic offense. The Texas A&M Aggies. Woo! Yeah. The number five LSU Tigers don't know. I mean, USC should be above LSU in my humble opinion. But, uh, yeah, I think Matt, you would play here, or Andrew, or is it you? I, I do. Okay. Um, look, man, Vegas might be getting me, but I would rather be gotten by Vegas than Jimbo freaking Fisher. How the heck is LSU 10-point favorites against yeah. a team that just struggled against – UMass. UMass. <laughs> the team Matt just talked about sucking on offense. A team that averages 13 points a game. 20 to 3, they won that game. Goodness me. LSU. LSU. That was the one that was the one bet I missed last week. Was this fucking was UMass. Texas A&M. <laughs> Look, man, LSU, you just scored 13 points on Auburn like what two weeks ago. That was an anomaly. Arkansas is a tough, gritty football team. A&M has nothing gritty or tough about it. The only thing tough about A&M is how tough their football games are to watch. Yeah. they're LSU, LSU by a million. Yeah, the only thing that worries me, I mean, I want LSU to kill them. I want Jimbo to get fired to be hilarious. The only thing that worries me about LSU is that that, Ar- that Arkansas game was 13-10, to 10, and I know Texas A&M is going to try to play good defense. Uh, but LSU should crush them, really, realistically. Just don't I mean, look ahead. We we talk about LSU's or we talk about AM's defense. Their their defense is good. LSU also has a good defense. Mm-hmm. For sure, top 15 pick in the NFL draft whenever he's gonna go. AM might not score more than seven points, more than 10 points. All I need is for three touchdowns. I'm asking for three touchdowns. I am here, once again, asking for three touchdowns from the LSU Tigers. That is that. And speaking of the LSU Tigers, Jaden Daniels was fourth on the Heisman odds when I just looked. What? He was, he, he was plus 3,000. Excusez-moi? That's crazy. Hold up. No, th- you, you got to be looking – Somewhere I'm not. I uh, it was just that the, the link I had pulled up was plus one twenty five, plus one twenty five for Caleb and Stroud, uh, plus twelve hundred for Quorum, and then plus three thousand for Jaden Daniels. So after the Stroud and Caleb, I have Quorum at plus fifteen hundred, Stetson at plus five thousand, Max Duggan at plus ten thousand. I see Daniels at plus ten thousand, Marvin Harrison at plus fifteen thousand, JJ McCarthy at plus twenty thousand. If you put money on JJ McCarthy. You suck at living. That, that shows you how much record. <laughs> Im- that shows you how much record it impacts the highest event, and even though it shouldn't, the J. J. McCarthy is on the list just because Michigan's eleven zero. Yeah, that's if, if, if you put money on J. J. McCarthy, how about instead you just comment on this YouTube video saying, "Hey, I want to bet J. J. McCarthy." to win the Heisman. I will send you my Venmo yeah, and we'll I will give you plus part. 17 million odds. <laughs> yeah, we'll 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 uh back that. If you if you comment that and want to give us like 10 free bucks, we'll we'll book that for you. I will we'll genuinely drop my Venmo. Uh <laughs> moving on, we're staying in the SEC. Tennessee Vandy I want Vanderbilt to win this game so badly, but I think they're going to get stomped. Yeah, uh, give me give me Vandy plus 14 here. Give, so I have I, – that's what I have. Vandy is fighting for bowl eligibility. Mm-hmm. Tennessee just lost Hendon Hooker for the year. Mm-hmm. They don't have their – so their CFP hopes are done. They're not making the SEC championship game. So really they're fighting for, like, which New Year's Six Bowl they're in which I don't think they're going to have much care for in this game. Personally, I, I think Vandy covers this easily. I think Vandy comes out fighting and Tennessee comes out extremely flat. Yeah, I mean, I just – it's hard because I know it's Vanderbilt. I know they have two, like, wins they weren't supposed to win in a row. Can they do it again? I don't know. Joe Milton's not horrible. He's not great. He's not horrible. Uh, this is probably the biggest Vanderbilt football game since they lost to Alabama by 60 in that game. <laughs> since the first Bush era. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
they got Tennessee got sliced and diced last week by Rattler. I don't even know who Vanderbilt's quarterback is. I don't know anything about the team. I just know they're number five in the poll of death. Um, I want them to win. I'm be rooting for them. Mike Wright, right? Or is it not Mike Wright anymore? It is Mike Wright. That's correct. Ooh, I know my Mandy. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> Mike Wright is good. I just I, I, I only know them because he torched Hawaii my Hawaii bet on the first on week zero yeah, where I had a Hawaii tough. money line. But you know, we we move past that. Yeah, and we're go not gonna Vandy. talk about Hawaii. Yeah, go Vandy, go doors. Can't believe they call themselves that. You know what, man? <laughs> Clark Lee's really building something out in Nashville. They could end up being a national power. Yeah, I, I agree. Nashville a fun place. Kids should want to go live there. And Make make Vanny the the new the new darling of the SEC East, please. I'm begging you. It'd be so awesome. I'm gonna go fire up NCAA 12 now and create a power. Yeah, because y'all know we can't boot up NCAA 24. <sighs> Terrible. We we can just you know in 2025. Yeah, just patch NCAA 14. Um, I don't think we have an official play for this. I have this in my parlay. USC Notre Dame number six USC against number 15 Notre Dame. I cannot believe Notre Dame's 15 in the country. USC absolutely needs this game. I think it's going to be a good one, but I just think Caleb Williams is way too good, and I think Drew Pine stinks. So I have UCLA money line in my parlay. I am a Trojan fan. I just want them to get, I, I think they're a lot of fun. I want them to be in the playoff. Um, yeah, I think USC wins the game. I, I think Jordan Addison being back to sh- – showing what he did last week is so big for the Trojans. Yeah. Like, Jordan Addison at full strength, I don't think there's anybody in the country that can stop this offense. Yeah. Notre Dame, they – they up a lot of – they up 33, 35 to Navy. What's yep. USC going to do to them? Uh, illegal things. Illegal. Yeah, it's gonna, I don't, gonna I don't think we're obligated to talk about it. <laughs> we we yeah. can talk about it, but we have to make sure all the viewers sign a waiver, and that's just too much of a process. Yeah, yeah it's a whole uh, thing. If you're listening to this, you have to be 18 years or older, and you have to. If you're under, you have to have your parents sign something for you. Yeah, you gotta. We it, have a waiver on the website. Yeah, they. I mean, that game against UCLA last week was awesome, and I think that they'll they'll put up a lot of points in this one. <laughs> that probably should have been my lock. Was over 74 in that game. Yeah. It's, it's whenever it gets in the seventies, I get scared though. I'm I'm absolutely, sure. I, I like I, I want to bet the bet the SMU over, but it's at seventy four, and I'm like, you know. <laughs> so also, uh, can I interject with something? Real quick? Sure. So uh, I didn't put this on my card, but FCS playoffs are beginning this week, and I don't have any plays in any games because I don't really care for any of these games betting wise. South Dakota State in my opinion, is by far the best team in the FCS, and they're plus 220 to win it all. I think that's a good bet. I don't think that there is a team that comes close to them. Second place odds is Sacramento State. I think this team loses in the first two or three rounds that they play in. They are a little bit overrated after getting by by the skin of their teeth quite a few times. South Dakota State, they're getting Tucker Craft back. They're getting Adam Buck back, who is an absolute stud linebacker. I would take the Jacks to win it all at plus 220. If you're looking for value, I don't hate Incarnate Word at plus 1,500. Lindsey Scott's the best quarterback in the FCS. So, little FCS corner of Andrew Stewart. I love that. I honestly I, – I don't think I can bet them in New York, but my pick would be – Let me see if I can find FCS game odds. Holy Cross. And Sluka. Shout out, Matthew. Find FCS odds, Cross. I'll – QB. Put them on Twitter, but I would assume they're not out yet. Yeah, Matthew Sluka actually went to um my rival high school. Ooh, and his brother is playing in my turkey bowl. So I've never done a turkey bowl. Turkey bowls I, are great. I've always wanted to do one. Unfortunately, to do one, you need to know people. So uh, yeah, <laughs> coming to my my friends uh, usually uh, just come, come to New York. Anybody wants to play in our turkey bowl? It'll already have happened because this comes out on Friday, but 10 a.m. So I will be there. Where? <laughs> this is just the middle of Central Park. Yeah, we're, pl- we're playing in the middle of Central Park. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. It. We're actually playing in the street right outside the Empire State Building. <laughs> it's the whole thing. <laughs> just they they, they shut down the street just for us. So, right before the parade, to like we do a, we do a ceremony and we just play football hungover for an hour, and then they can start the parade. 
the our, our our parade is act our game is actually the kickoff for the parade. Yes. <laughs> so I think our last game on the slate. I don't think I missed anything, but Air Force San Diego State. I think that's our last game for the Saturday slate. Yeah. I, uh, have... I, I have. I have two. I, yeah, oh, I think... and you know what? They're my locks, though. They're my locks. You're right. You silly goose. I, that's why I wrote my little X in my notebook. My bad, man. Sorry. No, yeah, you know, you missed you missed one on me too. No, it's I'm my a... lock too. You know, you're. you're they, I'm good. They, you know, I'm good, man. <laughs> He's a great host, man. You gotta give him props. After the one <laughs> week I did be. it, I, I every once in a while I'll forget. Not this week. I was rushed too. I'm making yeah, things, making picks on the fly. Ready. <laughs> um, I so I have I have San Diego State money line here. I think. Or not Sandy. I have Air Force money line here. Uh, oh, Air, Air Force has it will slow the game down. They're playing at the lo- slowest pace in the country, one thirty one out of one thirty one, and that's that's not good for San Diego State. San Diego State need, want, needs to dominate time of possession to win. They run the ball sixty percent of the time. They need to dominate time of possession to win, and that's just not going to happen against Air Force. I think. We we loved Air Force early in the year, but I think it's uh, we started fading them early. I think I fade them again here. Give me San Diego State money line. Yeah, or Air uh, Force money line. Like Boy, what am I saying? You you're all over the place, man. Air Force money line. <laughs> I, I said everything to talk about why Air Force should win. Then and then you yeah, said San Diego State money line. <laughs> yeah, that's the pr- the classic <laughs> switcheroo. Uh, I don't hate the under in this. Yeah, one, it's just a fade yourself pick. But, yeah, but uh, Air Force the, the total money negative? line. It's minus one twenty five. The spread's one and a half. You can take that one and a half point if you want, but I'm that, that's just begging to lose seven to six. The under is forty four. Uh, I'm gonna pencil that in for a late night bet. I'm gonna take the under forty four in that because I agree with you. Time of possession. Air Force doesn't let up a lot of points, nor and they hold the ball onto the ball forever. So I mean, if you go on average points allowed per game. San Diego State allows 21, basically, and Air Force allows 14. That's 35. The number's 44. I think Air Force wins this game, like, 28 to – let me do the math. Do math. Do math. 28. 14? I guess you 42. 42, yeah. So, no, give me give me 21 to 13. That's the final score. Get you under by 10. So, Duke is barking yeah. up a storm upstairs. I hope nobody can hear him. But does that mean we take the Blue Devils this week? Mm, I, no, we that was my lock this. last week, and it hit. Shout out Duke. Yeah, but um, last point here regarding this game, and I've entirely lost my train of thought. Yeah, this 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 Air Force game has me in a blender. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh yeah. So I was just talking about Air Force time possession. So Air Force, if you look on, if you track games on the ESPN app, which I don't know why you ever would, but if you track games on the ESPN app, they for for like the lower tier games, the non SEC, ACC, they don't update the time of possession during the drive. So I will frequently like go on there and see, and why is this Air Force game like 15 minutes behind everything else, and then Air Force finally kicks their field goal, and it and it, it transport 14 minutes in time. So they, they they just chew up that clock. Two and on college hoops. I'm back, baby. Thirty one and twelve. Uh so yeah, let's let's go Air Force money line. Ooh, little same game parlay, Air Force money line and the under. Don't hate that one bit, might actually do that. But that's our slate. Time to go into the parlay teaser corner. Um, I guess I can kick that off. Look, guys, I haven't hit a parlay in a while. I love my dog parlays, but we're going we're going with favorite. We're going with favorites this week. I know. It's tough. No. It's rough. I'm not doing Dude, a dog That's parlay. why Duke's barking, actually. Yeah, he's it's freaking rough, out. Rough. I didn't do a dog parlay. But well, my parlay is Kentucky money line against Louisville. Uh I don't even know. Is Malik Cunningham playing? Probably not, right? I had to imagine no. Yeah. So I mean this is going to be a game where I think Kentucky wins the game close at home. Will Levis, like, plays all right. He'll probably throw for, like, 180 yards and run for 90 yards. I'll be like, this is why Will Levis is a top 10 pick. This is why Will Levis is my top quarterback. I'm going to be like, no, he's not good. Louisville's not good. Louisville being ranked kind of doomed them for me. Uh, I don't think they're going to win this game. I don't think that they're very good. Kentucky's not very good either, but it's at Kentucky. So that gives them the edge money line there. 
Like we said before, I'm taking USC money line. They're going to put up a ton of points in Notre Dame. Big win for them because Notre Dame's a top 15 team for some reason. So that really boosts their college football playoff stock. I'm going ECU money line. I like ECU this year. I believe they're coming off a loss. To Houston, yeah. Houston popped up. Houston, yeah. I think Houston still has an outside shot to get in the AAC championship, which is absolutely bizarre. Do they? Um, That would shock I, I don't think so. They need like a ton of help. There's they're they're not out though statistically. That is unless insane. Guy, seeing unless, that they suck at football. Unless some guy on Twitter lied to me, but yeah. ECU, oh come on! Twitter again, never lies. Yeah, ECU against Temple. Mm-hmm. Temple's not good. I like ECU. I think ECU is good. They're gonna. They're twelve and a half. The money line's like four ninety or something. But add that to the parlay. I'll probably be the one that loses. Just kidding. None of these will lose. And I'm gonna. Uh, so three favorites. Then I'm gonna take more of a juicier line to bump it up. Uh, UCF team total over 44 and a half sitting at even money right now. So I think they score 50 points on South Florida. Granted, South Florida probably put up points, but I trust UCF more. They're going to play angry. They just lost to Navy somehow, which is a bad loss, and yet they're still ranked. So I don't know. Um, So that parlay, Kentucky money line, USC money line, ECU money line, UCF team total over 44 and a half. That gets you to plus 487. Put like a unit and a half on that, and that'll that'll bump you up. That'll help your day out. Also, I'm looking at the AAC standings right now. Yeah, Houston, so they can't pass and... Tulane. So they need UCF lose, Cincy lose. And they would probably need tiebreakers to go into it. Yeah, what's, what's, what would be the tiebreak with Cincy? I think it's uh, – uh, It would be division, common opponents, I think. I think it's division record. Uh, there, there's no division. Record. Uh, conference record. Well, con- that, con- uh, that'd be the same. Yeah, you're right. It's common opponents. You're right. So then – I mean, um, I'm, I can't calculate that right now. Yeah, <laughs> it's, that'd be so awesome if they got in, though. Then my I, I actually have, the AAC uh, cut my bet would be alive. Bet. <laughs> uh, just I've been ca- I've been counting that bet bet as dead for a while now. Andrew, so do you have another parlay, or is that going to the next segment? You could you're gonna combine it's going into the next segment. Oh, let's go. We're looking up uh, Houston's common opponents, guys. We're, we're, this is good radio. It's absolutely phenomenal when you know we try I'm to not just even... fill dead air. Usually when I edit this, I like go through everything and cut out dead air. I'm going to rock on this one. Last show of the week, they get us pure, uncut, unfiltered. Wait, what? Uh, when I, I'm not cutting anything. Nothing's oh, being yeah. cut. Not even – just going to throw up the graphic, edit it, take the audio out, and that's going to be everything. Are you we, looking we, at – We're doing opponents? it all live. Yeah, so their tiebreaker is weird. So here's what it reads. The winner of the Cincinnati two-lane game on Friday will decide will host the championship game. If UCF wins against UC, USF, they get the other spot, which UCF should win that game. They, who knows? They just lost a bad game, but they should. If – Tulane beat Cincinnati, USF beats UCF, and Tulsa beats Houston, Cincinnati gets the other spot. But if Tulane beats Cincinnati, USF beats UCF, Houston beats Tulsa, the final spot is determined by a combination of computer rankings between Cincinnati and Houston. <laughs> that, that is that is not a joke. This is what the Twitter reads. That's awesome. I want that to happen. For y'all's bet's sake, I hope it happens. I'm putting that tweet underneath. Um, I think the graphic for this episode is just going to be that. <laughs> I'll send it to you right now. <laughs> How Houston can still win the American. It's alive. They're alive. It's alive. So, <laughs> alive. For, for the record, apparently they, they use four rankings. Right now, Cincinnati is 26.75. Houston's 47.25. So they're not very alive, but they are breathing, barely. They found a pulse. There is a heartbeat. Absolutely. Someone get the defibrillator. You got one, Matt? You got a, you got a parlay for us? I do. I call it the get into the Pac-12 championship parlay. Let's very go. <laughs> I have Washington to cover and Oregon to cover. So Washington obviously needs to needs to win. Oregon need Oregon wins and they're in. Washington wins and Oregon loses. Washington gets in. I think both cover. So Oregon minus three and a half, Washington minus two and a half, both cover fairly easily in my opinion, but both of them are far better teams than who they're playing against. 
So that gets you, it's just two minus one tens, gets you plus 265. Yeah, I, I like that. I, I've heard the argument that, you know, Washington, if Oregon wins and the Washington players find out they're not going to try, yes, the heck that they are. You know what happened last year between the, those two teams? Washington State fans stormed the field at Washington. You know how demoralizing that is? Washington's going to want to kick their tails in. All right, ready? So I love that. I, I love that. I have a – I'm doing a get into the AAC championship parlay. And <laughs> it's all for Houston. So listen to this. Uh, is the line – oh, let me change the line. Yeah, well, all right. So because uh, since he's ranked 26 and Houston's ranked 47, right? Huh? So that means now we're gonna we're gonna do some little calculations here. Let's what's the most it'll let me take? Tulane. All right, Tulane minus three and a half is the most it'll give me. I was trying to do Tulane like minus fourteen, but that's not letting it happen. And then let's go Houston and take the biggest spread we can because they're twelve right now. So let's get it all the way to eighteen. All right. So to get into the AAC championship parlay. South Florida money line, Tulane minus three and a half, Houston minus 18, plus 5730. Hey, we're cooking now. Hey, Houston fans, if you're listening, I'll put the balance on it. (laughs) Everything you own, put Duke on it. Even even though we already have the bet, even though we already have the bet to get into the AZ championship game, we will still put the rest of our accounts on it. It's the literal that's, dog parlay. That's not that's such a mega dog parlay. We're calling it the cougar parlay. Ooh, wait, <laughs> cougar is the cougar a cat? A cougar's a cat, yeah. It's the uh what's a massive dog? Uh the dingo. Uh, the dingo parlay. A dingo's a dog? Yeah, the dingo's a dog. I mean it's in, it's in the canine family. Yeah. What's the, the biggest member parlay. of the canine family? The wolf it's like a wolf. The wolf dog parlay. Largest member of the canine family, the gray wolf. Yeah, it's the timber wolf parlay. I think the viewers really deserve an episode. Hey, yeah, as a Minnesota timber, timber wolf fan, you should know that's not going to hit. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that you're right. <laughs> I was this podcast right has gone off the rails. We are <laughs> incredible insane. stuff. Just get ready for the, the bowl show, it's going to be absolutely electric. Oh my gosh. I'm going freaking ham responsibly. The bull, yeah, we're going bet responsibly, but we're going crazy on the bull show whenever that comes out. So let's move into locks. I think I've won, like, I think my record right now, which is week 13, right? So, but but it's our 14th week of betting. It's our 14th week zero. show. So I believe right now, 14, I think I'm nine and no, I'm eight and three. No, you five, eight and, four. eight and five, five. right? No, you. You would be eight and wait. Did you guys? No, do it? it's the it's the thirteenth week of betting because we bet week zero. Yeah, so I'm eight and four right now. But did you guys yeah. do a lock for week zero? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hell I, yeah, I, we did. You remember everyone at TikTok was... in front of me? <laughs> my my oh, lock yeah, was yeah. Hawaii money line. They lost by fifty seven. Yeah, so I'm sitting at eight and four right now. This is maybe I'll have one for the bowl show, maybe. But this is the last five star white whale lock of the week, and I'm giving it to you early. Because happy holidays, happy Thanksgiving. UCLA minus 10 is the lock. They're playing angry. They put up 45 against USC. I expect them to put up like 56 on Cal. Cal's not going to score. Like we said before, this game only being 10 is blasphemous. The Bruins are a five-star white whale play of the league. Absolutely hammer that. I might make this like a 10-unit max, whatever it is, on Friday. Um, I'm... I'm just looking forward to this game. That's my last lock of the regular season. UCLA minus 10. So despite some disastrous performances and locks, like, you know, Hawaii money line losing by 57, <laughs> I, I am seven and six. I have a chance to go positive on the year still. Huge. And with the team that's going to do it for us, Washington, Washington, like, like, like Andrew Rooster said, they are, they are going to come into this game angry <laughs> They are going to come into this game upset, and who I don't care if they don't have a shot at the Pac-12 championship. They're going to want to beat the piss out of out of Washington State. Mm-hmm. And the, for this spread to only be two is crazy. I expect what if they're going to win this game by a good amount, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see some Washington fans storming the field. 
I genuinely think they can win this game by like 17 just to put it to Wazoo. Yeah. Just to put it to them. Even though I like Wazoo as a team, Washington's offense is dynamic. They're going to be able to score on Wazoo's defense, even though it's a good defense. And I think that this is going to be a good performance for that Washington defense. I'm going to, I don't think we've done this this year. It's a lock parlay. Let's it's go. That's, that's, that's a first. It, it's a it's a first. It's only two legs, but it's two legs I could not decide between. So I'm doing both of them. I'm doing both of them. First off, Oklahoma, Texas Tech, Oklahoma, they're not a good team. They're not a good team. They can score. They can score. They've got some good guys on offense. They've got some good guys on defense. Oklahoma being a two-point favorite at Texas Tech makes no sense. Texas Tech is not that good. Oklahoma just wins this based off of talent alone. Dylan Gabriel, do what you do, bud. And I think they win this game by 10, 14, 17, 21, whatever. And then the second one, I would rather inject boiling grease into my veins than bet the Miami pit over Miami and pit two teams that suck at everything when it comes to moving the football in the right direction. 43 and a half Miami might not score more than 10 points, 14 points. Pitt probably doesn't score more than 24. So even if it's 24, 14, that's 38 out of 43 and a half. And we glide, we zoom, we absolutely freaking move with the green in our account. I can't remember what the odds are on that. It's plus 264. Hammer it to the extent that you want to responsibly. I will hammer it quite responsibly myself. I love responsibly hammering box that's what i've been doing all year and it's really helped me out so i'm on if we just want to run through them once again i'm on ucla minus 10 matt you're on washington minus two yes sir and and drewster OU oh. and pitt miami under parlay plus 264 that's a beautiful way to wrap up the regular season thank you guys for listening thank you guys for watching uh yeah that's the regular season for us we'll be back with like a bowl extravaganza show I don't know, maybe we'll have guests. Maybe I'll wear a party hat. I don't know. We'll see. Ooh, but uh, thanks for hat. listening and watching. Let's you listen. know what? How about before we end it, before we end it, I want to interject something. Yeah. Let's have a little competition. Ooh, bowl, bowl game competition? A little, a, little, a little punishment? A little punishment action? A little punishment action. No no winning because if you have the most units won, you, you, that's You're your prize. Yeah. That's your prize. We'll, do, we'll do like winning – whoever is the lowest winning percentage – has to do a punishment or i say we do units because you can do two units on a game yeah, yeah that's true. We, we don't want to do the tally site thing where the where, where they post like the top the top win percentage yeah. thing and yeah. it's it, and it's a guy who has like mi- minus 575 money lines and i could do that i could i could yeah, actually yeah. absolutely oh no no this is the, we're men we're men of integrity for this yeah. yeah you know what rules you cannot take a uh game that is like Minus 140 or worse. I think it should be all spreads. Yeah. I I think you can take a slightly, like, if you want to take, like, a minus one and a half in money line, if it's, like, minus 130. I think that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, like, anything under minus 150. Anything under minus 150 is fair game. Fair. All right. And let's do, like, maximum two and a half units, three units. Because you you can't be, like, oh, ten units on this team, one unit on that team. Yeah, just to chase. Yeah, we'll we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll figure out the complexities of it and announce yeah. it on the. And then, uh, if you guys and the, we'll think of a punishment. Uh, the punishment. What you want the punishment to be? Uh, we'll have the comments on there. Uh, best comment punishment. That'll be the punishment. And if we don't really have one, we'll just come up with one ourselves. Or we'll ask people on Twitter. That's yeah. We'll ask we'll ask on Twitter. That's a great idea. Um. Yeah. So my nice my, challenge. My we could do that. I, I'll get hypothermia. I'll just jump I'll on a frozen be lake. with that. I, I, we can do an ice bucket. It's like 67 right now. I'll do an ice bucket challenge. Hey, you want me to just jump in the snow? Yeah. I'll just jump in the snow shirtless. That, that'll be my punishment. That's good. Well, Granted, we'll nobody wants to see that. But... We'll, we'll, we'll lap it up. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that is our show. My ring light fell. Uh, <laughs> I wish this I show, this show was off the rails. <laughs> this show is incredible. None of it's getting edited, none of it's getting fixed. Just it's gonna be a beautiful hour show of just us rambling. Uh, but thanks for listening and watching. Let's win some money.